uh, the month of July is the feast. I want to thank God for another opportunity and thank our pastor for also giving us this opportunity. And we pray that none of us will disappoint God in Jesus' name. Amen. On the day of the, of the last feast, we all be present in the name of Jesus. And the topic before me this morning, by the grace of the mercy of God, is step up. Tell your neighbor, step up. Step up. Our text will be taken from the book of John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. It says, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But it's, this is spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him will receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. And I want to also read it from Amplified Bible classic edition. It says, John 7, 37 through 39. It said, now on the final and most important day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried in a loud voice, if any man is thirsty, let him come and drink. He who believes in me, he who cleaves to the, and trusts in and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. May we not have be stagnant waters in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, stagnant water stinks. But flowing water is refreshing. In th that 39 says, but this is poor concerning the Spirit. For those who believe in him will receive. And we pray that God will give us the Spirit in Jesus' name. It will search us through and through, and everything in us that is wanted, the Lord will feel tonight, this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the scripture says in Galatians 5, 16 through 18, Galatians 5 through 18, 16 through 18, and so I tell you, leave the way of the Spirit. Let the Spirit lead you. Then you will not do the evil things that your sinful self wants. Because the sinful self is against you what God wants to do in our lives. Step up. To step up is to seek to improve. Is to do better in everything you are doing, to advance, to develop, to intensify, to grow, to progress, to move forward and to move on in life. Albert Einstein said that you cannot solve a problem with the same mind that created it. And I've seen nations somewhere somewhere, that that same mind that created problem want to be solving it. It's not going to be possible. Insanity has been defined as doing the same thing over and over and again and same old way and expecting a different result. Many are suffering from all manners of challenges, maritally, spiritually, in relationship, in career, and so on and so forth, because they continue to do that same thing over and over again, refusing to step up, pointing hands to the other persons are the problem, not looking at themselves. We cannot expect a breakthrough if all we do is to keep doing the same thing the same way. And, and that thing is not working, but we keep doing it the same way. We all need to step up. We all need to rise up, including myself, to grow to improve to a new way of thinking. That's very important, especially we assume too much. Assumption. I was in a chat with uh, about three people who were trying to solve uh, another challenge. You know, we solve challenges a lot as human. Though we are not God, but we have to help people. And um, some, I just saw somebody left. And if somebody leaves because one, the other party contributed or said something, your assumption is he left because that person said something. That was the first thing I thought myself. But I said, no, let me call her 
and check why. And she told me, I'm so sorry, I changed my phone and the phone just decided to take me off. Please kindly add me back. I could have assumed that she left and begin to nurse that in my mind and said, how come you leave a chat? We all live on assumptions. We need to step up. You, you coming home and all you are thinking is that woman is never going to give me food. She doesn't even, do, and that's the day the woman did her best to give you the best. You have already assumed that she's not worth it. We all need to step up and make changes in some areas of our lives, especially in our spiritual work with God. 1 Corinthians 13, 11, 1 Corinthians 13, 11, and Previve Fashion says, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I taught like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I had a woman too, I did away the childish things. The Bible says that when you become a man, you need to give, do away with childish things. Many adults are still talking like babies. Babe, babe. And are you? Are you trying? That's the way, in the spiritual realm, that's the way they are talking. Because they refuse to grow. And they refuse to step up. 2 Corinthians 5.17, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature, creation, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Many of us are still doing, living that old way, old behavior, same attitude, nothing changed. People cannot just di differentiate between that your person before born again and the person that is born again. It's the same way. The same old way. Nothing changed. We must step up so we can access that what belongs to us. Most of us are not getting what we want from God because we refuse to grow. Let's look at the crucial areas we must step up at so that we can be where God wants us to be. We can fulfill destiny. We can fulfill lives. Number one is that, you know, this Bible, um, they said, I think, it's, um, it's not the Bible now. Char charity begins at home. So our home is the first thing that we need to step up at. Because if every family is united, the church will be united. If you don't mature and grow as a wife or a husband, even if you claim to love your family, you will lose that family. You will cut your marriage short. I've seen marriages of a month in divorce. One month. So what was the stress of getting people involved when you know it's not going to work? Marriage is like salvation. You have to work it out with fear and trembling. It is like salvation because that thing can lead you to, to hell. Today's open heaven is about visas to heaven. That visa can be cancelled because of one person that you have married. Every day of trouble, fighting, can cut short somebody's lifespan. Step up in the way you relate to your spouse. Nabal, if you know the story of Nabal, in 1 Samuel 25, he died because he refused to get himself to where God wants him to be. And um, handsome David, after the man died, took that wife, Abigail. And because David saw that this woman is very good, though, only that that man didn't see it. May nobody take your place. And that which belongs to you out of stupidity and foolishness. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you don't step up as a woman, you may lose your husband. I may even run into trouble with God. And Proverbs 14, I will read it in easy to read version. Proverbs 14 verse 1. It says, a wise woman makes her home what it should be. But the home of a foolish woman is destroyed by her own actions. That one even said actions. Are your actions destructive or constructive? Check yourself. Your actions can be constructive and it can be destructive. 
You can say the same thing trying to pass a message across in a destructive way rather than in a constructive way. So before you utter any speech, you need to think, what I'm saying, is it, going to be, is it destructive or is it constructive? Your action determines your marital and your success, your relationship success and, su and your, your life, how you succeed in life. And if you know that in this century, if we don't step up, st uh, step up as good parents, Christian parents, hmm, it will be difficult to raise children. We need to step up. It was tough in the days of Eli. Imagine now that there's too much temptation for these children. Too much. Things that you didn't go through, they are going through it now. Too much exposure to too many things. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In our parenting, we need to step up. You need to create time. We said that yesterday during the marriage, marriage counseling. You need to create time for your family. The only time you stay your wife, you love your wife, is when they come to marry, marry uh, program and they say, tell your wife, I love you. That's only after that, another next year. Children don't know what I love you is. So when they hear it outside, it's strange to them. So whoever tells them they love them, they grab those people. Because they don't hear it often. Wives don't hear it often. Am I lying? Am I lying? We are all quiet. Maybe 10% of us say it. Maybe. We need the good. If you don't step up in your relationship with your siblings, your brethren in church, your neighbors, your colleagues, people in general, you will soon be on your own. So when you invite them for a party, they don't come. You have to think about that thing you have done to them. We need everybody to succeed. The good, the bad, and the ugly. To succeed, we need everybody. Joseph needed his brothers to become the prime minister. To them, they were doing him evil. But to him and to God, they were the stepping stone to his destination as a prime minister. That is from Genesis chapter 37. We need to learn how to manage people. Step up in your people's management skill. It's a great asset, and we all need to manage people because that alone can cancel your visa to heaven. You have to be trusting enough. People need to tr allow people to trust you. I remember one time, my husband will remember, we were in Nigeria, we were pastors, and my husband needed to choose an assistant. And because we really don't know things that happen in the church, we are just there because I'm not a trans. I don't help people transmit anything. I don't hear nothing. I was in my children's church. I've been there since 1995. I love my children's ministry. So my husband decided to choose one man as the assistant. And um, the wife came to me once she heard. She said, I have a secret I need to tell you. He said, but don't tell pastor yet. I said, what is it? She told me, sorry, I'm not the first wife of my husband. I said, it's a hard thing for me not to tell pastor, but I she said, I trust you won't tell pastor. And I didn't tell him. People need to trust you. And when it was time, I, go, I go, went back to my sister. I said, I need to tell pastor now. I think you have to release me to tell pastor. Because we had people now that have been coming to us and telling us the same thing. And she said, it's okay to tell pastor. Somebody will keep secrets to your hands and you help them transmit it. You know, transmitters. They are not gossip. And I don't blame them because I blame you that gave them the information. Because you can't, transmitting a, 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 a story is CNN also transmits. So if you decide to meet somebody in the church, you've not accessed the person, you don't know who they are, all the stories of your life, you poured on them. And they have to transmit it and you're angry. Don't be angry. It's a sin if you're angry. 
because you don't know the person. One time, I've, I've, we are pastors now 22 years by God's grace, and I've seen all kinds of things. So a particular innocent sister, the same thing, told another sister. So they came to me for, to help them uh, solve the problem. God will help me. Before we start that story, this other sister has told all the story the sister had told her. Thank God that the sister also confided in me. So I knew most of the stories. In front of them, I said, see your life. You go to church, you met somebody, you don't know who the somebody is. Assuming I am not, and bad, terrible things that she was saying in front of me concerning the sister. That one was defenseless. Like, ah, you will say this. But thank God she has said most of it to me. She had told me most of these stories. Before you give your life to somebody, not Jesus now, eh? look very well. So, because you give it to somebody, whether Jesus or somebody. We need to be positive about other people. We need to support people when they need us. Step up. When I came last week, God have mercy because I said that you see 46 children and adults were actually, uh, uh, what's it called now? Sponsored to, to where we went to. A lot of people gave. Let's appreciate the Lord. Not that this is 46. And I told you one family sponsored 18. Some of the sponsorship were like, they paid, some paid half, some paid quarter, some paid zero. But we have to be sure they really don't have that money. When you support people, when is your time, people will support you. Help people. Give credit to those who are doing well. Don't bring them down. Step up. If somebody is doing well, let them know you are doing well. Give them credit. Because envy and jealousy will make some people bring other people down. We need to seriously learn how to manage people and their expectations because people's expectations are very high, including myself. We have high expectations of other people. Because if you don't, it's a big distraction to your spiritual growth. And making heaven for you may not be guaranteed. The only people that can make you miss heaven are people and yourself. Those are the only two people. This computer cannot make me uh, miss heaven. Because it doesn't have power over me. But people, your spouse, your children, your church people can make you lose heaven. You may say there are terrible individuals that cannot be managed. There are. Unmanageable people. You know when they say ungovernable, unmanageable. There are. Another way that you need to manage people to help you is to mind your own business. Every time. Mind what? Your own business. That's the way to manage people. Things that they don't ask you to put your mouth in, you put your mouth in, they will disrespect you and you'll be angry. I told someone, I said, I heard you are going to be doing something, but you did not invite me. If you don't see me, don't be angry. You have to let people also know what you expect of them. Let people know how you feel about a situation. Very important. When people refuse to speak out for too long, it's like water that is stagnant and starts to rot. August Strindberg say that. And Isaiah 50 verse 7, Isaiah 50 verse 7 says, The Lord God will help me and you. So the bad things they say will not hurt us. And will be strong. And will not disappoint Jesus. Romans 13, 8, I love that scripture. It's on my signature on my Yahoo. It says, you owe nothing to anyone. Owe no man nothing except to love them. You always love them. The person who loves others has done all the Lord requires of them. Owe nobody nothing. To love them, apologize if you're wrong, and forgive if they have wronged you. 
If they say they do not, don't take apology. Sister, sorry, there's nothing I can do. I can't help them. I've done something wrong. You told me. There are some people, they will do something wrong. It's glaring and they'll be arguing with you. No, you don't need to argue with them. Just say you are right. And, and move on in your life. Do not hold grudge against anyone. Step up. It's not worth it. After one of my daughters did something, not, I corrected her for something that happened in California. And yesterday she said, oh, I'm sorry for my behavior. For one minute, I, th I had to think, what did she do? What did she do? What did she do? Because I couldn't remember what she did. Later, now I remember, oh, I said, okay, you are okay. Do not hold grudge against anyone. It's not worth it. A politician, a politician, I was listening to him. He said they took the mandate from him. He won a particular election. They took it from him. And they were in court. And all the people that and they knew they took this thing from him. And they told him to his face. And he was greeting them and was shaking. He said, I was giving them poison. And that's true. He said, I was giving them poison. I was shaking them. I was hugging them. He said, later, they all came back to apologize. If you have done all and the individual now refuses to love, to accept your apology, that woman, you can't help them. Only God can help them. Matthew 18, 15 to 16. Listen to what the Bible says. Matthew 18, 15 to 16. If your brother or sister in God's family, it didn't say outside church. It says in God's family, do something wrong. Go and tell them what they did wrong. Do this when you are alone with them. If they listen to you, then you have helped them to be your brother and sister again. 16 says, but if they refuse to listen, go to them again and take one or two people with you. Then there will be two or three people who will be able to tell all that happened. If they refuse to listen to them, tell the church. And if they refuse to listen to the church, treat them like unbelievers. It means that they are not ready to move on. And you cannot waste your time on such people. I don't waste my time on people that waste my time. There was a particular sister when I was in Nigeria. God is still helping me. I'm helping me with my mouth. And... Um, she came the first time. She was in a group of, it's been a long time. People have been in a group of friends. So she was in a group of friends. First month she came. We sorted matter with Sister Abigail. Next month, Sister Lazarus. Ah, I said, my sister, I, I don't think I have time for this. I'm very sorry. I said, is it that you leave the group or the group leaves you? If everybody in the group is bad, then check yourself. When you were in the palace of the king, they were bad there. You went to the king of palace. There are people there are bad. You went to palace, the king of palace. The people are bad. Uh-uh. Check yourself. After a few months, I saw my sister. I said, ha, you didn't bring your mother. I said, because I left the group. There are some relationships that is not worth your, your stress. I'm saying this because we need to step up so that we don't miss the plan and the purpose of God in our lives. We also need to know that in our area of career, in our area of jobs and businesses, we need to step up. Many of us are not improving in knowledge, in exposure, in experience, but we want better results. In academics, like um, Temi that was teaching uh, 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 did the message this morning, said he got a D, and he went to the teacher, what can I do to make an A? To make A. But if you are not improving, you just want to stay on one spot. You are not improving on your knowledge on Excel, or your knowledge on uh, Word. When I got to this country 17 years ago, I was only 34 years old. I didn't know how to turn on computer. But now, that's times, Father will tell me, help me do this thing on Excel. Help me do this thing. Why? Because you have to step up. Most of the things we do for the, by the grace of the mercy of God for the trip, I do them on my Excel. 
and if I need help, I call one or two of my sisters or brother, please, how do you do this? Sometimes parents that come to the daycare, when I see that, I will see this is a man. You should know. I say, my brother, do you know how to do this and this? I say, I say maybe. I say, this one doesn't know anything. <laughs> I just go on Google. How to do this on Excel. It's very important to step up. Very, very important. Proverbs 22, verse 29. See thou a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before ordinary people. When they stand, they talk, people listen. Because they have something to talk about. We must step number three. We must step up in our Christian walk with God. God expects us to grow daily in the spirit and we die in flesh. But we are not dying in the flesh. That's the challenge that most of us have. We must daily clean our heart. The song, the song says, search me true and true. We want to be where you are. Psalm 24, and it was in open heavens today, Psalm 24, verses 4 to 5. Say, who may I ascend to the ease of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? You have to come with a pure heart. But if you can't even pray, you are thinking of the person that spat at you. One day, one sister said somebody did like this to her. I, I hope you see my nose. I said, maybe the nose is itchy, the person. said, no, the nose is not itchy. I said, I can't help this one. Somebody is doing it. What if the nose is itching them? Huh? What is my home with that one? The time I will use to plan my trip, I will spend it on somebody that is, the nose is itching. I will assume your nose is itching you and pass you by and move on in my life. I don't have that time. If you have anything against your sister or brother, go tell them. And if you don't tell them, this is not important. If it's important to you, you tell them. But if it's not important, move on in your life. And once you move on, don't... Move on means forget about it, don't talk about it anymore. Because you want to pray, you won't be able to pray. You want to worship, you can't worship because of somebody. Many people have left churches because of somebody. How can somebody make me leave the presence of God? Never. Very important. Christianity is beyond altar call. And you have to understand people that people are different. Because your pastor's wife, where you are coming from, likes to go to, from door to door greeting people. I'm not like that. I am not like that. Lower that expectation. Lower it very to zero minus ten. I'm not like that. Because some people just like to. I don't do. If your sister has done something, let me know. I call our sister. We talk about it and we move on. Very important. This thing I'm saying, I don't know why God kept telling. When I was preparing, that's the same thing God kept telling me. And God is going to heal our heart today. Maybe somebody had hurt you from the palace of the king to the king of palace. And you are here now. Forgive them and move on in your life. They post something on status. How do you know it's you? Did they mention your name? Even if they say Pastor SB. I might know it could be Sharon Brand. Does that... Does that make it me? No. Because those are the things that keep you down as a child of God. It's not making you move on in life. You need to move on in your life. People are, can never be perfect. Those marriages you see everybody holding their hands, they got their own issue. But they fix it. You have to learn to fix your issue with God and God alone. Very important. You cannot continue to do the same thing the same way. I want God to step in. You cannot continue to disobey God's instructions. I want God to do something. If I give you instructions and you don't obey my instructions, there's consequences for that. 
Your Christianity this year must be better than where you were last year. You see, Apostle Sir said, I die daily. Every day you must search and see, what have I done wrong? It doesn't mean that I'm not going to offend you tomorrow. I tell people, when you greet me, I don't hear, greet me again. Because when you are greeting me, I'm thinking of children's weekend. What are we doing on Friday, on Saturday? So I'm not listening to you. So you have to tap me and say, I'm greeting you. Then I'll say, sorry, my mind is not here. So how do we step up? Let's read our Bible daily. Let's study the word of God. Let's be in fellowship. Let's, number two, let us obey the voice of God. That's how to improve. Obey the voice of God. Because you can't hear God if all you are hearing is, she did this to me. That's my husband. That's my wife. How can you hear God? Because two multiple voices are talking to you. Satan is doing his own. Uh, you are doing your own. Your husband and your wife, they are doing their own. The sister in church is doing her own. That your children are doing their own. You can't hear from God. So we need to set apart a time to feast in his presence, in his word, and his voice you will hear in the name of Jesus. What is God telling you concerning things? He said the voice cried out to the people, come and drink. It may not sound great to the ears, but if you refuse to follow the voice of the Lord, you may end up in pain. May we not end up in pain in Jesus' name. We are in the days when everyone wants to do their own thing, and they want you to do what they want to do. You know that some people, they want to force you to be what they want you to be. Be yourself. Number three, and lastly, you need to continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. John 7, 39 says, but he spoke concerning the Spirit. He said, come and drink. And the Lord will make us drink at his presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Luke 24, 49, Luke 24, 49 says, behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from high. In summary, we must not do things the same way we keep doing it. In your marriage, your relationship generally, in your career, improve yourself in your job. Don't stay on one spot forever. We must, in our Christian life, in our parenting style, we must feast in the word of God. We must obey the voice of God. There are times God is telling us to do this. But because we are not, I was telling one sister yesterday, she was, uh, on Friday, she was laughing. I said, if people are coming to marry you, it's your choice. God will tell you, if God tells you the person's teeth is like this, and that's your husband, and you look at the teeth and say, ah, how can I present this to the people of God? I said, see, it's your choice to choose whether it's that one or the one in, in, in Lexus that's not your husband. You must step up to continually fill yourself with the Holy Spirit. Let's rise up to pray. Ezekiel 36, 26. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, I will also put a new spirit in you to change your way of thinking. I will take out the heart of stone from your body and give you a tender human heart. Let's ask the Lord to search our hearts. And replace every stony heart with a heart of flesh. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help me to grow in you by the power of your spirit. Father, I desire to step up. Don't let me remain the same. I will never remain the same again. Ask the Lord that God, let me not remain the same again. Let me not remain the same again. Let me not remain the same again. Help me change my heart. Change the way of my thinking. Some people, what is keeping them down is the way they are thinking. Is the way they are thinking. They assume too much. Father, please help me. According to your word, I stand upon your word in Ezekiel 36, 26. And I say, Father, put a new spirit in me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We are so grateful. Be thou exalted in Jesus. Amen. Paraventure, you are here tonight. You want God to really, really change your heart. Just lift up your hand to him. You want to give your life to him. Say, God, this message has really spoken to my heart. Lord, I'm not calling you out. I just want you to stand and God be a witness and say, Father, please help me. Lift up your hand. Thank you. God bless you. Say, God, help me. Help me. 
And the Lord will help all of us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Before I call pastor, please be seated. Before I call pastor up, I just want to remind us to please help us share the backpack flyers. Amen. It's next Saturday. We don't want any child to miss out. We have over um, 800 now. I want to say thank you to all those who have supported the, this program. We also want to let you know that on the on Children's Weekend is next August, next month. And every Sunday of it, our T-shirt this year is blue. No God and do exploit. It's available for sale from $10. So, but you don't have to pay $10. You can pay $20 for our T-shirt to support the children's church. We have so much to give out. And I will tell you more next week. Thank you so much. God bless you. Let's have a invite to pastor.